Hello you people and welcome back to Level Up Your ELO. Today we'll look at an awesome game by the Filipino American Super GM, Wesley So, where he combines an exciting mix of strategy and tactics, leading to an instant classic, and he was still very young at this time. Let's see if we can pick up some key ideas from the game. Let's boost our ELO. Round one. Fight! This game took place in Cebu City in the Philippines during the Asian Individual Championship. Wesley plays as White, rated 25-16. His opponent is Mortesa Majub, 24-79. I hope I didn't butcher that. I probably did. Oh, before I begin, before I forget, if you do like this content, please leave a like and sub. You have my gratitude. Let's get started. So the game starts with E4 and D6. D4, Knight to F6. This is the perts or perk defense. Knight to c3, g6, and Wesley does the Austrian attack with the f4, maximizing central control. Uh, Black, of course, is trying to counter that with a move here, and bishop here. Bishop to g7, knight to f3, castle king, and now bishop to d3. d3. Knight to a6, ideas here, castle king, c5. Here, the tension was reduced with d5, and knight to c7 was played, just rerouting the knight. Now there's actually a very interesting set of dynamic line in this line, and that's with the c4 push. Just eyeing this pawn and trying to take away the defender and looking at the dark squares here, but more importantly because the fianchetto is established with the dark squared bishop, the line goes takes and then hit crazy you take and then knight takes and the thing is yeah you you can't just take easily there because after checks this falls so say you protect e3 and allowing your rook to develop then simply takes and takes and then hit and you've got this crazy dynamic position where you could get attacked by the rook and the opponent didn't go for that. That's totally wild. And probably not a good idea if your dark squares become weak. Because now the light, the dark square bishop belongs to white. Anyways, after d5, knight 2 c7 was played. And now queen to e1, just shuffling the queen. Ideas of queen to h4. e6, again attacking the pawn here. Also now, again, central tension, because black's issue here is developing the bishop and then the rook. D takes. And it's a simple take. Of course, Wesley reduces the tension of the position. But black is asked the question, do you want to take with f7 takes on e6, or do you want bishop takes on e6? And it looks like bishop to e6 develops quick, but then you have f5. And it's not easy because um, you have to go back and then it ruins your structure if you take. Never advisable, of course, on the on that side. Not always, but if you take with a g6, it breaks your kingside pawn structure. So say after c4 takes and takes with check, uh, white is just better. So in the position after d takes, f takes on e6 was played. And now Wesley hits the center again, e5. And still, you'll notice Wesley's so tricky here. This is like, how are you going to develop that light squared bishop? You now have to fianchetto and go here. But that's kind of slow now that I'm just taking over the middle. The opponent doesn't take. Instead, plays a knight, uh, knight to d5. And here, Wesley, of course, doesn't want to take. Because uh, that allows the knight to develop, but also ideas of developing here. So Wesley just tortures the opponent because he has a nice wedge pawn with knight to e4. It's a common motif when you have an advanced pawn there and you have a knight nearby to just strengthen the weak squares uh, of your opponent for your, for your uh, advantage, of course. And after knight takes on f4, bishop takes on f4, and now white is asked to question and looking at black's sad bishop there, what is a stronger move for white here? Do you take with a pawn or do you take with a knight? And positionally, there is one stronger move that is a bit of a prophylactic, but also improves the position of white tremendously. And it's not taking with the pawn, because this opens up. 
you give the opponent activity after hits this is being hit you're giving the opponent time and this bishop has come to life i know this bishop is still sad but that's not the strongest move and wesley plays the strongest and stronger move knight takes on d6 eyeing these squares disallowing the development here and still maintaining the sadness of that bishop knight to d5 still trying to get a hold of the center queen to g3 now possibly allowing ideas here also uh, attacking that with a move like uh, c4 queen to f8 rook a to e1 knight to e7 bone crunching inaccuracy actually we know that black's position is bad because white just has a monstrous amount of control in the center but the better move instead of the knight is bishop to d7 and after say c3 just expanding try to get some counterplay in the queen side there the opponent tried to defend with knight 2 e7 still underdeveloped but here comes knight to g5 and the thing is when this is traded this is a much better rook than the rook there that is just hanging out twiddling its thumbs and i don't know playing playstation 5 on that corner after takes rook takes on f1 and notice how there is a wedge pawn eyeing f f6 and uh, d6 and these two knights Yes, the meme is these knights. But look how it's eyeing every single thing on the uh, the king side. And you've got a monster bishop. And you've got this. Just maximum activity. All gained from restricting the middle. Wesley knows how to play the position. Knight to f5. Wesley plays bishop. That was a nice knight. This is a great bishop. It's a fair trade. And after this move, Wesley sacrifices the rook, which is a brilliant move. And the opponent resigned here. You might be wondering why. You can't take with the queen, so you take with the pawn. But notice how this and this and this all attacked. And this bishop does not really cover a significant square. Well, we have queen to b3, slicing. And then the queen is helpless to defend against two knights check 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 there's no exit square so you have to sack and then you get checkmated that's part one after this bone crunching move say you move your queen here well we just park the rook f7 mate is the idea so that even if you move to this side takes and there's an open check so it takes open check goodbye queen and let's go back again. What if you sidestep here? Well, the idea remains the same. This is just unstoppable. This square is attack once, twice, three times, and there's a pin incoming. So hit the queen. And if you try to save the queen, takes here with mate in one. You have to block. The game is just absolutely done, completely forced. Checkmate. It, it looks so simple, but yeah, it's beautiful. Quick recap, guys. E4, D6. The Perts. G6, F4, the Austrian attack. Knight to F3, Castle King. Bishop to D3, Knight to A6, Castle, C5, attacking the center. Wesley reduces the tension and pushes on D5. Knight to C7, Queen to E1. Logical moves from both sides. This bishop needs developing. Takes. Takes with the pawn. You've got e5 now. Wesley avoids the trade. That's one of the key things, right? When you just have that. And although you're giving up a pawn, you're going to gain it back. Takes. Capture. Capture. Not with a pawn, but just suffocate the position. Proper piece placement. Shutting down the dark square diagonal. And after that, Developing again. Threats and development. Now just a huge mistake. Bishop 2 was better. Now you're forcing black to trade its strongest piece. And after the trade, the other piece is just worth a pawn. 
hits the rook, game over. As we've looked, takes, you got this finisher. After takes, you got this finisher. And yeah, hope you guys got something out of that. I know I did. I'm not a dynamic player, but this game by Wesley shows that sometimes we can be dynamic players, combining a bit of strategy. Hope you guys enjoyed that. I'll see you guys later. Double peace.